Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Theresa May has insisted her Chequers proposals are a workable plan for Brexit, saying she gets irritated when the debate focuses on her leadership rather than the future of the country. The Prime Minister made the comments in a BBC interview to mark six months to go till we leave the EU. This morning, the Environment Secretary Michael Gove said the Chequers plan for Brexit was the right one for now, but could be altered by a future Prime Minister. Our political correspondent Chris Mason reports. To emerge from this period of change stronger... The path towards Brexit has involved plenty of speeches and plenty of characters. Some still in government and some not. And plenty of negotiation too, here at home and in Brussels. After a week in which some of her MPs met in public to plan how to derail her blueprint for Brexit and others openly plotted ousting her from office, Theresa May is defiantly fighting back. This is where I get a little bit irritated. This is not, this debate is not about my future. This debate is about the future of the people of the UK and the future of the United Kingdom. That's what I'm focused on and that's what I think we should all be focused on. It's ensuring that we get that good deal from the European Union, which is good for people in the UK. Some Brexit supporters say her plans involve too close a relationship with the EU. Others, like Michael Gove, acknowledge they've compromised. But, he says, those compromises needn't be forever. A future Prime Minister could always choose to alter the relationship between Britain and the European Union. But the Chequers approach is the right one for now because we've got to make sure that we respect that vote and take advantage of the opportunities of being outside the European Union. But this former Conservative leader and a good number of his colleagues are not convinced. Michael Gove has said, now's the time for compromise, change can come later. What do you say to that? I think that's a bit of a cop-out, really, to explain away, you know, what is essentially jam tomorrow and we can prophesy where the future is. We can't. You only have what is now, what the public voted for, which is Brexit. With so many arguments still swirling around, who makes the final call? The Labour Mayor of London thinks it should be us, voters in a referendum. The question should be a choice between the deal done by uh, this government or staying in the European Union. And the because deal done by this government, we can now see what actually uh, the, the, the consequences would be. Labour's leadership remains to be convinced on another referendum. The Prime Minister insists it won't happen. And she says she will fight for her plan. You know what some people say? They rather liked it when you joked about being that bloody difficult woman. They like that. And they sometimes say, where's she gone? <laughs> we want her back. Well, she's still there. But I think there's a difference between those who think you can only be bloody difficult in public and those of us who think, actually, you bide your time and you're bloody difficult when the time is right and when it really matters. That resolve will certainly be tested in the coming months. And Chris Mason is with me now. Not just the coming months, Chris, she's got a big EU gathering coming up this week. She has, yes. Yeah. So she's heading to Salzburg in Austria for an informal gathering of all of the EU's heads of state and government. And she knows, and they know, that her Chequers plan has not been universally liked here in the UK and Europe has asked some pretty searching questions as well. Now, those in government point to some warmer words from Brussels, but nonetheless, they still have some problems with it. So the big push from Downing Street and from ministers is talking to four different audiences. The EU, uh, they want to talk to their own MPs and others, the Conservative grassroots and the broader public. And there's going to be a big social media push starting tomorrow with a video authored by the Prime Minister. From those at the top of government, there is a determination, but there's an awareness that this negotiation is, is proving tough. As one senior source put it to me, it's never as bad as people say, the source said, but it's not as good as some people hope. Chris, thank you very much. The Scottish Tory leader, Ruth Davidson, has said she never wants to be Prime Minister because she values her mental health too much. In an interview with the Sunday Times, she's revealed struggling with self-harm, suicidal thoughts and depression as a teenager. Stephen Gordon has more. In reviving the fortunes of the Scottish Conservatives, Ruth Davidson's personality has been to the fore. 
Her leadership style has convinced some in the UK party she might succeed Theresa May. But today in the Sunday Times she insisted she'll never be Prime Minister because, she says, she values her mental health too much. In the interview she describes going into a tailspin as a teenager. I started hurting myself, punching walls, cutting my stomach and arms with blades or broken glass, drinking far, far too much. Diagnosed with clinical depression, she was given medication, which led to desperate, dark, terrible dreams. Her struggles came when she was the same age as many of the students now at university in her Edinburgh constituency. It's definitely something that lots of young people are going through, and having someone like her talk about it, yeah, it can only be, really be a good thing. If everybody's open about it, it kind of will help other people that are struggling come out. Mental health charities have also welcomed her openness. I think it's very brave for any politician, leader, uh, uh, to come out and, and speak about their own struggles with a, a mental health problem because the reality is that, especially in politics, mental health is still seen by many as a weakness. On Friday, in a BBC interview, Ruth Davidson was asked about a move to Westminster. My job's here in Scotland. I want to retain my seat in Edinburgh Central in 2021. I want to be the next First Minister of Scotland, the first Conservative First Minister of Scotland. That's always been my aim. The fact she and her partner are soon expecting a baby is another reason. In three years' time, the voters will decide whether Ruth Davidson achieves her goal of becoming Scotland's First Minister. Her political ambitions, we've now learned, shaped by her own personal struggles. Stephen Gordon, BBC News in Edinburgh. And if you've been affected by any of the issues raised in that report, you can find more information and support at bbc.co.uk forward slash action line. Now, Theresa May might be irritated by all the speculation over her leadership, but she insisted today she wanted the political debate to focus on the country's future rather than her own. It's the often personal, often toxic kind of modern politics which has put one possible contender off the top job, Scottish Conservative leader Ruth Davidson. She's been praised by mental health campaigners after talking openly about the self-harm and depression she suffered as a teenager. Helia Ebrahimi reports. Today, Theresa May hit back against increasing criticism of her policy on Brexit and her future as Prime Minister. This is where I get a little bit irritated. This, is not, this debate is not about my future. This debate is about the future of the people of the UK and the future of the United Kingdom. The Prime Minister also launched a tirade against Boris Johnson and his description of the Chequers' plan as a suicide vest for the UK. I have to say, I think that choice of language was completely inappropriate. I've been Home Secretary, was Home Secretary for six years and as Prime Minister for two years now. I think you know, using language like that was not right and it's not language I would have used. A former Boris ally, Michael Gove, has rebranded himself as a May advocate backing her Chequers policy. But today he seemed to suggest that his support for that deal was temporary and perhaps for the Prime Minister too. A future Prime Minister could always choose to alter the relationship between Britain and the European Union. But the Chequers approach is the right one for now. Good morning, Mr Gove. And rather than defend her position, he appeared to want to talk exclusively about the weather. Do you think that people like Boris Hello. Johnson... It's very Good nice morning. to see you. Hello. Should, oh, should another they television stop manoeuvring, given, given the Prime Minister's comments about being irritated? Uh, it's lovely to see you, and it's a beautiful day. Um, uh, one of the nice things about September is that, um, for me, autumn do, 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 is, one do you the, think, is one of the Do you think that people seasons. like the Environment Secretary, perhaps taking his brief rather too literally, irritated? It's, it's beauty does and the, diversity Does the Tory government now support the and, Prime Minister? And I hope that you will have a, a, a time today maybe with your family or with friends, to enjoy the great outdoors. Do you, are you saddened by Ruth Davidson's comments about not wanting to be part of the Tory leadership? What does that say about how poisonous politics is now? It's really nice to see you. I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you. But the toxic environment spilling over from Brexit is exactly what has led Miss Davidson to rule herself out of joining the fray if there was a leadership vote. Asked if she would ever run, Miss Davidson told the Sunday Times... No, I value my relationship and my mental health too much for it. I will not be a candidate. The 39-year-old who was pregnant with her first child explained that she had a history of self-harming and had suicidal thoughts when she was younger. 
Mrs May will have another one of these heads of state meetings in Salzburg this week. Amid the cabinet squabbles, the questions over her leadership and the threat of a possible second referendum, negotiating Brexit with Brussels could seem a bit of a getaway for the Prime Minister. Well, Ruth Davidson's frankness about her struggles with mental health issues has been praised by fellow politicians as well as psychiatrists and campaigners. But it has revealed the almost insurmountable challenge of succeeding in public life at the same time. Well, joining me from South London is Katie Perrier, former Number 10 communications advisor. And with me here in the studio is Alistair Campbell, who is Tony Blair's press secretary and director of communications. Alistair Campbell first. Do you think that Ruth Davidson was right to fear that the toll of number 10 and being prone to might take on her mental health? Well, I think only, only she can know what she believes are the limits of her talents, ambitions and so forth. So, you know, I'm, I'm ha very happy to take it at face value. But I, I think, and I think it's good that she's spoken out about it, but as somebody who, like her, has had kind of mental health struggles in the past and now, uh, I don't think that it should rule anybody out from thinking that they can go right to the top. I mean, let's not forget that Winston Churchill, who most people see as our greatest prime minister, was a very, very chronic depressive at times. Abraham Lincoln, who was America's greatest president. I mean, I know Donald but Trump thinks They weren't thinks prime minister him. now in today's no, no, I'm, climate. No, I'm not saying that today's climate isn't different, but I don't think we should imagine that just because, in her case, you have had mental health struggles and you think you might have them in the future, that that should bar you from the top job. I mean, all the other things she yeah. says about her personal life and having a child, I think that's absolutely right and it's down to her. Let me put that to Katie Perrier. It shouldn't bar anyone from the top job having problems with mental health. No, it shouldn't. And I think the Conservative Party has seen today just what they're missing by Ruth Davidson saying that she doesn't want to go for the top job. Maybe we should look at the whole way we do politics and this is an opportunity to change. Because many people will be going to work tomorrow thinking, if Ruth Davidson can do this, so can I. If she can lead the Scottish Tories from two seats to 13 as she did at the last election, then maybe I can get out of bed and I can go and do my job too. So I think she's an inspiration today and I welcome what she said in the papers. So you regret that she's not going for it? Yeah. I mean, in politics, I hope people say never say never um, and maybe she will see the kind of outpouring of, of support for her uh, over the next 24, 48 hours and think, you know what, it's a long path ahead of me, so don't make any decisions now. But, you know, only as, as Alistair quite rightly said, only she can make that decision. We can't make that for her, but I think we'd be poorer for the fact that she wouldn't be in the last two of any leadership contest in the future. Alistair Campbell, do you think politics has just become too tough and the media too unforgiving, fellow politicians, social media, the 24-hour nature of it, it's just too tough? Um, I think it is tough. I think it's always been tough, and I think these things have maybe made it tougher. But, I mean, you know, whatever people think about Theresa May, and, I mean, I think she's making a complete sort of, you know, dog's breakfast of, of Brexit, but you look at her and, you know, she's under massive pressure, and she looks rather haunted and rather tortured by the whole thing. But she is still getting out of bed every day and, and going and do it. What I do worry about is that fewer and fewer people are even thinking about politics as a career at a time when actually we need really good people going into politics. Now, I don't think we should see this as a kind of mental health issue. I think it's, it's simply that, that, that the grind... Uh, politics, to me, the modern 21st century politics, it's a bit of a laboratory for mental health problems. The hours, the stress, the separation from family a lot of the time. So I think Katie's right. I think we do maybe have to think about how, wh whether we couldn't do it in a, in, a, in a less kind of, you know, animalistic sort of way. Katie Perry, what did that animalistic um, environment, as Alistair Campbell's just put it, what toll did that take on you when you were in number 10? Oh, it was the most stressful job I've ever done in my life, but we got through it. Uh, it wasn't a particularly pleasant time, and I feel for those that are in there now because it isn't much fun. It is much more of a dedication than take the salary uh, and, and run and go away, but uh, the people that are in there are doing the best that they possibly can, so I try not to knock the fact that they're in there and they're working really long hours, but it is a toll on your life. It's a toll on your personal life, your marriage, your children, the fact that, as Alistair says, you're away from home for many, many hours of the day. In fact, you know, you might as well sleep there for the amount of time that you you are actually at home and Ruth is probably taking that in, all into consideration the fact that she wants to be at home in Scotland with her partner and her child in the future not in London trying to juggle the two we get all that I see m many mums in Parliament having the same problem as to Campbell what impact did it have on your life after you'd emerged from those years with Tony Blair and Gordon Brown last week? Um, well I mean I've, I've uh, impact on my life when I was doing the job 
I mean, I'm glad that I did it, but I don't doubt there was a big impact on, on my family and there was also a big impact on my mind. And when I came out of it, I, I went into an absolutely uh, pretty suicidal depression. Um, suicidal? Yeah, and, and you know, in fact, I, I've, I've, my, I've got a book out this week, which is the diaries of the Gordon Brown years, and I was depressed a lot of the time. And I'm not blaming Gordon for that, but Gordon was desperately trying to get me back in um, and I was desperately trying to kind of stay out, and it's a horrible tension. And, and it's, it, is, it is difficult. And the thing is, it, listening to Ruth today, or re reading Ruth today, it reminded me when Charles Kennedy was still alive. He and I used to talk about his mental health, not least his struggles with alcohol. And I honestly do think if Charles had found it within himself to have been open, to have admitted there was a problem, to have tried to get help, then he'd still be with us. But actually, he found that very, very difficult because of the way politics was then, never mind how it is now. Which is why what Ruth Davidson said today is so significant. Mm. Um, Katie Perrier, if not Ruth Davidson, if we have to trust that she's not interested in the top job, basically it increases Boris Johnson's ch chances, doesn't it? Who knows? I mean, there's something like 20 runners and riders of the next leadership of the Conservative Party. And if you know who's going to get it, then let, let me know and I can put a bet on because I really am none the wiser. But what you'd be happy with that Boris the MPs for PM? Are responsible for for getting them down to the last no, two. No, she wouldn't. But I'm a massive fan of Boris Johnson, and I think that he's a great man, but me and him don't agree on, on the issue of Brexit, I'm afraid. Well, I have to leave it there. Katie Perrier, Alistair Campbell, thank you very much for joining me.